Hello and welcome back to Wall Street Training's Advanced Excel for Data Analysis course. In this section here, we will look at some ifs. We will look at several ways to take a conditional sum. In other words, only take the sum of these numbers if it matches a preset criteria. We'll look at that as well as look at a much more complex method of using arrays in Excel as well to automate, once again, a fair amount of our calculations, once again, to reduce our manual labor and become more efficient as well as more effective in Excel. Let's take a look at our problem set. Our problem set says the following. Let's say that I have here in column I, in column A, I mean, a bunch of department codes. In this case, we delete a lot of them. We just have one department. So forget about that. We have a lot of different accounts. And we have our journal entry, general ledger entry, and we want to take the sum of these. What's the realistic example is? Think about this. We might have a lot of uh, departments like 101, 102, 103. 101 might be sales, 102 might be the marketing staff, 103 might be technology, whatever. And for each one of these, they also have account codes for expense reporting. Let's say uh, account 21008, the first one, let's say that was all travel related. Let's say account, you know, the next one, 21406, whatever that is, let's say that's all, uh, you know, entertainment related. And we have an entry here, and now what we would like to do is sum up. For each department, like I said, in this case we only have one, but you'll see how this works. And each account, we want to take the sum. Like for instance, now which I'm going to highlight here, uh, 21008 is repeated. This is repeated in the same number of cells. We want to repeat that. And we basically said take the totals of all of those. The last thing you want to do is sit there and add up the numbers manually. The last thing you want to do there is sit there and cell reference each one individually. And the last thing you want to do is to have to manipulate and change the data by sorting it and doing this and doing that. So how can we do that? Three different ways. We'll do it manually. We're going to do cell references. See how annoying that is? It's not too bad here, but think about it if you had a million entries. Some if. We're going to use a formula here to calculate it. And then later on, we're going to use an array function. So let me just walk you through this. It'll become a lot more clear. So the manual way of getting every single department 101 and account 21008 in cell I11, I'm going to say equals. We're going to add up manually for me, folks. Add it up manually just to prove a point. Not too much. It's only a couple of cell references. In I8, I want, in I11, I want to say equals and then select C11 plus C16 plus C21 plus C26 plus, you already see how much of a pain this is, C31 plus C36, God forbid you forget one, plus C41 plus C46, wow, how many do we have here? Okay, that's it. I think it was eight of them. Here's your formula. Please match it. Take the time to do it manually because I want to make sure that these numbers formula matches mine at this point. Exactly matching. And then F2 edit mode to go back. And instead of hitting enter, I need you to hit control shift enter. That's control shift enter. And now you have the right number. What did it do? When you hit control shift enter, hit, uh, um, look at your formula bar on top. It says squiggly lines. That means it's an array. Think of a matrix in basic mathematics. A matrix is what this Excel is doing. Taking a matrix and summing it up and multiplying and doing whatever into one cell. Now I need you to take this, shift down, control D, and there you go. You did not need that column E, the combined accounts. And when you hit F2, you don't see the squiggly lines. Correct? Correct. But when you look at the formula bar on there, which I know is kind of hard to see, there's a squiggly, and therefore, now you're good. Hit Alt equals to sum it up. Let's go through this formula once again. 